What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Heavy Wrench. Today we're pulling liners. I started pulling one before I started the video camera again, as usual. But, like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thanks for tuning in today. This is the Amazon liner puller that's hydraulic that Mr. MLH suggested, highly recommended. And I pulled the first liner, no issues. It's not too bad. I think it's supposed to have a second set of nuts up here but it didn't come in the package. A little disappointed on that, we'll see what happens. Um, this one's all adjusted up. I had it tight already. So I'll go through the full process here in the next one of actually getting the liner out. These liners are wet liners, so they generally pop pretty good there. Um, it would be nice to be able just to pop this whole thing out like this. Set it down on the ground. Loosen up the bottom nut. Slide it down, slide it out, go for number three, actually, yeah, it's number four cylinder, but it's the third one I'm pulling, so there's that, a little different direction this time, I guess, um, it doesn't come with a slot in the thing either, for the jack, so, that's kind of, couple little things that I'd really like to have done, but it is what it is. Should be real close there. Leave her sit like that. Reach up underneath. Push up. Tighten up that bottom bolt. It'd probably be a little trickier if you were doing on a V-block or something, but really not that bad to uh, do on the inline. I want a little bit low here. So I'm going to pick her up a little bit. See if we can't get it at the right spot. There's just a wedge in the bottom that snugs out tight. And I think I got it. Loosen her up just a little bit. We'll tighten this up again. Yeah. That's a pretty good spot right there. Loosen it up till the jaws are all touching. I feel like they're all touching. We should be good there. But basically, this is uh, pretty simple pulling these liners. A little bit of pressure, then she jets right on out. I guess you could, if you wanted to, loosen it up and do it this way. If you really wanted to, because that liner is so loose, I don't have to lift the whole thing out and off on the ground again. Go to the next one. I just keep going down the line. Well, they got still for me. I think the way I had it, the collar was about a quarter inch above the cylinder on this one, which is no big deal. Maybe that's a half inch now. Yeah, that's about right. So really, if you were to adjust these down to where it bottomed out, you could make it really fast for recovery on it, but I did not do that. So, kind of my fault there. But we only got three left to do. They really pop out really nice. So there's that one. Let this go down right about to there. Oh. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make a 10 minute video out of this. Maybe we'll take a look inside the block, but I'll put the part number of what I bought 
uh, down in the description, hopefully. If I remember, I'm really bad at that, but I'll try to get it down here somewhere. Um, but yeah, this is definitely. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Heavy Wrench. Today we're working on this 6404 engine, doing some assembly. I've already gotten a lot done. I got the liners in. Didn't fire up the camera this morning. I've got the liners in. The cam bushings are in. The main bearings are in. I am getting ready to do my plastic gauge, double check the crank, make sure everything is good to go. Um, the crank has a little oil staining on it from the soot over the years, back when we had high sulfur fuel and all that good stuff. Nothing really concerning on the crank, so today we are going to, uh, I'm going to still go back to old school with the, the speed wrench here and kind of get things tightened down. I know some guys probably use an impact for this, for snugging them down and, you know, seating them. But I'm going to use the speed wrench. We're going to check our plastic gauge. The John Deere book um, says to go to 150 foot pounds. I'm going to double check that because it seems awful light for the plastic gauge measurement. Um, but I've got some assembly lube on the bottom side of the bearings. The plastic gauge is all on the top. Um, but yeah, so we're definitely. I've been getting after it this morning on this, or today I should say, it's not even, I guess I could say this morning because it's afternoon now, but I've been getting after it on this and uh, we're definitely making headway, that's for sure. Um, trying to get stuff accomplished here. Oh, I got the parts for my, um, what you want to call it over there, TS-100 that I got the transmission apart. I don't know when the video is coming out on that or whatever. But we're going to torque this down to 150 foot-pounds like the book says. I'm going to double check that and then we'll uh, we'll go back from there and we'll check some plastic gear. So stay tuned for that. We're going to get this done. I appreciate everybody that watched the first teardown. Um, the only problems we've seen was pistons. Uh, the valve guides were horrible. So it was definitely burning oil through there. Uh, the pistons, the skirts were really bad. Um, I did double check number four. Uh, valve, I'm sorry, lifter guide hole. That was just a little chunk of dirt in there. I cleaned it out, put it back in. That was okay. Uh, the cam needs to be replaced because the oil pump drive gear was bad. What else was, uh, so I got a new cam for it. The oil pump drive gear, got a new one of those. And basically we're kind of doing a um, kind of an intense I would say in frame type of deal we're not really the crank seemed to be fine everything's good on that um, it really looked good I don't even think it's worth polishing that's why we're plastic gauging everything to make sure and confirm so stay tuned I'm gonna torque these down and maybe we'll chat about some other stuff that's going on in the world maybe not we'll see stay tuned though So we're going to torque these down. I have my click style Matco torque wrench here. No need for the tech angle to come out for this one. But we're going to torque these down to 150. Just like the book says. Oh, you know what? Better be careful here. That socket's cracked. See those cracks? I don't know. Might be a different socket. Don't like. So I broke them all loose with my uh, big ratchet. I'm gonna start taking these out. With the speed wrench. Speed wrench here. These things are. Kind of a thing of the past. You don't see a lot of guys use them anymore. Um, everybody uses their impacts, which it don't matter. If you, as long as you use a light setting. I just, uh, you know, 
feeling kind of nostalgic, figured I'd pull it out of the box and I have an actual reason to use it, so might as well. It just sits in the toolbox most of the time anyway. You know, this is your first uh, high speed tool right here. And this one's, I could probably use a little oil in there. Hmm. Or if I just put a little assembly lube in there. We'll see if that helps. Drop a little bit down in there. We'll see if it gets down in there. I'm using uh, red line assembly lube. It don't matter what assembly lube you really use. Um, as long as it's a good quality product, that's all that really matters. I don't know if this will actually go down in or not. I'm hoping it stays down in there. Oh yeah, she's starting to go. Oh yeah. There we go. It's starting to get down there now. So, I'll get these taken out here. I'll do some readings myself. So I don't have to bore you with that. You're probably bored right now just watching me uh, use this, you know. But, it's all good. So, all right, sounds good. I will uh, catch you back in a minute when I check these blast gauge and see what it actually does. Always good to check them. All right, blast gauge. Looks like we're right about right about two thousands. Two. Yeah, right around two on that one. So that's pretty good. Tang tang. We'll wipe that off here in a second. Just don't want to. Oh, got lucky there, boys. Whoo. Yeah, no harm, no foul there. About the same here, it looks like. Yeah, we're right around two. Yeah, two to maybe three on this one. We're between two and three. So, as long as they keep going between two and three, we're gonna run her. That's within spec and we're good to go. Some of these are, you know, they they really do a nice job of shooting back in the day. I'll tell you what. Yep, that one's between two and three also. Yep. We're we're right there between two and three thousandths. I'll tell you the truth. So let's see what our thrust is here. Yeah, same deal. Same deal. Yep, yeah, between two and three. So we're looking good. I'm, uh, yeah, so we're looking good. I'm gonna put some assembly lube on these things and torque it down. Then I gotta put pistons together. Oh yeah, between two and three again, guaranteed. Yep. We're looking good. We're looking good. I will tell you a little tip here uh, for getting plastic gauge off. This is a plastic scraper. It, uh, it does a good job um, taking off the plastic gauge from the crank and from the uh, bearing. So if you don't put any oil on it, like I didn't oil the top of the bearing at all. Um, so I use this little plastic scraper and this was like an Amazon deal for putting on decals. So um, 
yeah, it allows you to take it off without messing up the bearing itself. Now I'm just going to clean everything again and then put her together. But you can kind of see here, if you use this, it really just kind of takes that right off of there. And you're not going to damage the bearing by any means with this plastic. So keep that in mind. You can see where my fingerprints are on there now, but I'll show you the next one um, also. But yeah, the plastic gauge is kind of like, you know, kind of a harsh deal, but if you, uh, I'll show you this one real quick. Don't you see this one if it's nice and clean? Yeah, this one I actually used two pieces on. So I'll bring it in nice and close here and let you see how it scrapes it off. You can still see where the plastic gauge was, which is not concerning, and this is our thrust. So I, I, I'm not going to check the thrust until we're done, but you can see how that bearing is there. So go from there, put her in, call it good, and we'll be good. All right, final cleanup and uh, assembly here. Make sure everything's good to go. Lint-free rags. Make sure none of our plastic gauge stuff is down in our bearings. Between our bearings, I should say, because that will affect it. Now we'll take our assembly lube, dump a little bit of generously on there. Spread it around. Wipe a little on our bearing. Our bolts are still oiled. Double check that. Yep, that tab goes to that tab. Yes. Sometimes you always second guess yourself. It doesn't matter how many times you want to be particular. You'll always second guess yourself. As I uh, got two tightened down right now, two caps, but as I tighten them down, I'm trying to uh, um, move the crank each time. I'll do the same thing when I torque it. Um, but right now I'm just kind of torque, torque, spin, spin. You know what I mean? Just to make sure we're on the right path. I mean, last thing I want is to not know what bearing stops it from uh, moving if one does, which we should be fine. I plastic gauge it all, but peace of mind, peace of mind. You know, it should really spin nicely. No matter what, you know. We got our last two caps to put on. up on that one a little bit but it's that that block the way it goes down in that block is so tight you gotta go square and suck them down I don't know if it's better to tap them down on or suck them down on with the like I'm doing them, but it's the way I'm doing it. Yeah, feels good. So, we'll have to check our crankshaft end play here in a little bit, and after we get it torqued, I'll check that. And there you have it. 
She rolls real nice, all said and done. And we're looking good. Check our crankshaft end play. I think we're gonna be good on that, but we'll get the dial indicator out and do that. And then we'll start assemble the pistons and the rods, and we'll go from there. <laughs>